case it's going to be our uh, trade and um, uh, will be grouped by key. So next uh, way how we can group this key is if we can group this, uh, this stream uh, not only by key but also by um, uh, by time time slice. So we will have a window here that will have a, a duration of five seconds. We will accumulate some of the results uh, that coming from the stream within uh, five seconds and we will advance this window by one second. And as uh, inside this window we will be performing aggregation. This aggregation uh, uh, has uh, three steps. Uh, first time when we approach this, we initialize our storage. So in this particular case, this street state object will be used as our um, accumulator. Uh, so the next thing is that we define what we're going to be doing when the new uh, event will arrive in this particular stream. So we're just adding a new uh, a trade. And um, as a result of this operation, uh, we also send this into so-called uh, uh, the materialized view or a state store called trade, uh, uh, trade aggregate. So in this particular case, uh, we don't see anything, and this is it's the power of Kafka streams, we don't see any like a database is how we, how we uh, specify where we're going to be storing this RocksDB or hash map or something else. Um, so Kafka uh, streams will take care of uh, stuff for us. So in this particular case, when we say materialized, um, the, um, the Kafka streams will create a state store that will have our trade state object stored there. And in case of failure, uh, this, uh, this stuff will be available after restart. Plus, it also can be available as a, as a, as a store. So I have another example uh, also in the same repository where you can find how you can actually enable external access to these uh, state stores to make your application not only your uh, stream processor, but also make it like small database with REST API. Now we perform this aggregation. Now we need to persist it back. So we get this, uh, we're getting this uh, into into stream. So we can perform some of the mapping. We perform some of the trans uh, transformation because we want to s store only uh, only final results. Um, and the final result would be written into um, into output topic uh, with a certain uh, serializer deserializer. Um, uh, parameter. So, so far so good, right? So it's, it's, it's relatively easy. So one, one, we have one topic, uh, some of the, uh, the trades arrive, we're trying to calculate uh, what's the average of uh, um, average price within five uh, second window, okay? So what it does, uh, the Kafka Streams does, uh, when we you know, perform this application in the runtime, it actually builds this uh, directed acyclic graph, it builds this topology that looks like this. So we have a few nodes that represent different processor nodes. There's three type of uh, nodes. It's a sync node, source node, and processor node. Uh, source and sync nodes defined obviously where we're getting data and where we're putting data and the processor node actually defines what we're doing with this data that comes from uh, previous step. So in this particular case we do have a few uh, processor nodes. So we start with the um, source, we're getting stream from our uh, streams builder and after that we're saving this to another, uh, another topic. So in this case we have a sync node and we have a two thing here. And as you can see, over here we have two elements. We have element of uh, stateful stream processing because we do aggregation and element of stateless stream processing. So in order to do this uh, processing and in order to um, s serve the purpose of stateful and the stateless processing, we also, the Kafka streams for us, will create state store that will store all this aggregated and accumulated uh, the, uh, information that will be executed. So. Uh, remember this picture because we will now we will scale this picture and, and bring to this application architecture. Now, essentially, how this application scales? Scalability in Kafka is the subject of uh, or like have a direct uh, um, uh, connection between number of partition and input topic, right? So when we're starting with the topic that will be consuming data, that would define the level of uh, parallelism in your application, right? So in this particular example, I have a four partition in my topic, so I can create a um, number of tasks that will be executing certain things, regardless of how many instances of your application you're running. So if you're even running one application within one JVM, uh, still four tasks will be created. Um, the tasks don't necessarily will have a direct connection between threads. 
task is this just uh, the a computational model that Kafka Streams has. Um, it's a, think about this like a green thread, right? Some, some software uh, defined uh, the procedures that will be executed inside your application. Um, there is actually cr strict correlation that you define in configuration, like how many tasks uh, one thread, uh, or like uh, how many, th what's the size of thread pool that we, you will be using to run this task. So this is our topology. The thing that I showed you on a previous slide, this is, um, this is, um, what we run this in multiple tasks. So the thing that you define in your DSL is actually a prototype. It's, it's like just a, just a topology that will be materialized with these tasks. Right? So this is why there's sometimes it's a challenge to, um, to debug this type of thing because you think, okay, I will put the breakpoint inside the code where my stream builder performing certain operation and I'm expecting that uh, my, uh, when I will be debugging, my, my code will be executed there. It's not entirely like this. We're just defining some of the like, supplier functions that uh, the framework will execute and there's different ways how we can um, debug this in the runtime. It's um, still, still a challenge. All right. So each individual partition uh, will be uh, consumed by a particular task. In uh, Kafka Streams, it's not the batch uh, system. So in this case, it will perform all these topology drivers for each individual message. So we have one new message. We'll get from one place to another. New message. It will go from sync to, or from source to sync and, and so far and so on. So this all operation will perform per message within this partition. Um, and the result will be pushed to the topic that needs to have the same number of uh, partitions that our source topic. Uh, and the state store will be created per, uh, per task, meaning that per partition, per task will have a state store that will have some of the information of the, uh, of the particular application, of, of, particular, of particular key. So we can retrieve this from the, uh, from the state store. How we can scale that? So we start with one application. We start with one instance of application. And uh, all tasks will be executed within one application. So um, next thing is that we're starting another application that joins consumer group. Uh, it uh, um, it um, triggers this rebalance protocol. And after that, uh, some of the tasks that were executed on the uh, instance one will be executed on the instance two. But remember, uh, uh, also pay attention to these guys. It's not artifact. It's not like I forgot to, you know, to move this, uh, these cylinders from one place to another. This is important because um, um, I will explain how it works when we're trying to scale down. So in this case, we still have this stored as the files on the file system. And so far and so on. Yeah. Regarding the store topic. Yeah. If I, whenever I update my my application and I change it, because uh -huh. it's uh, an evolving uh, de development, then several uh, store topics might be unnecessary anymore. Some uh, put this question on your stack uh, because uh, we, we, we can talk about this about upgradability. It's a little bit um, th there's some there's some there's some tricks. Yeah. So uh, when we start the third application, it also has donor state. We also run another task in the in the application in the other side. So now we have a full distributed mode. This application uh, will use an application ID will be translated to to consumer group. So in this way, how we can scale this application. Now, the, the fault tolerance and the scaling is the two sides of the same problem, right? So we're trying to uh, scale um, out. Now we're doing the scale down. One node died. So this is why we preserve state. Uh, because sometimes, like, we, um, 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 we want to recover faster. And uh, some of the state that we have in the instance one, instance two, we can, uh, we can uh, reuse in order to um, speed up the recovery process and how it works. So uh, Kafka Streams provides this fault tolerance through this uh, called um, so-called change log topic for each individual um, uh, for individual uh, state store, it will be created a state uh, uh, change log topic that will have the same number of uh, partition as uh, this particular um, uh, state store. And uh, all this state will be not only stored locally, but also will be replicated through Kafka. So this is default mode. You can disable uh, replication for some reasons because you might use in some custom store that already does replication for you. For example, you use 
some distributed in memory data grid as your state store. And in this case, replication will happen naturally within this in memory grid, so you don't need to use Kafka to do replication. Um, here usually goes a joke about uh, like a French people drinking uh, their own champagne, but uh, French people multiple times told me that they don't say that, they don't do that. So we're talking about dog fooding. So Kafka streams is a built-in uh, framework for Kafka, meaning that it eats same food um, it is part of it. So it doesn't um, it use Kafka not only for reading data and writing data, but also use Kafka for its own uh, uh, needs, like a replication of the state. So change log topic will be stored on the Kafka. So the way how it looks like, uh, change log topic has same number of partitions as a uh, as number of tasks. This is how the state migration is happening. So it's a uh, very uh, more or less straightforward. When the application will go down or when we start scaling out, we will uh, rehydrate this state or update this state with information that's available in changelog. Um, so recovery time varies on multiple aspects because the changelog topic is a regular uh, compacted topic in Kafka. So you need to uh, plan and uh, um, to configure the change log topic in order to uh, it not grow like too big, um, so the recovery will be faster. Also, because it's the compacted topic, um, the, the compaction will or compaction time will be depend on the things like uh, size of segment. Because as we know, the compaction happens only on inactive segments, not on the not on the like active segment. Um, the large state of your application will imply that its potential will take longer to recover. Um, there is some, uh, some correlation between size of segment, uh, segment size and uh, state size, like overall how much uh, state you're storing there. Um, and um, the smaller, smaller state obviously will be uh, faster, uh, faster to recover. And you need to be mindful about like what you store in there and how this topic needs to be configured, uh, and how it can be, uh, you know, how much how much stay there and like what kind of stuff you moving around. All right. So this is the part about Kafka streams. I don't what yeah. You Which one? Just running really quickly. Yeah, because I don't have a time. <laughs> yeah. Which one? Interesting stuff. Yeah. Very complex. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which part uh, you don't? Let's clip, clarify for me what you mean by segment. Yeah. So, do you understand how the uh, compaction works inside the Kafka topic? In the so, inside inside the Kafka topic, all the topic it's not continuous file. Uh, this Kafka topic usually represents with these segments. Segments is the small chunks of the file. The same way how your rolling appender works in log4g, similar thing works in this Kafka topic. So, segment size is fixed. Usually, it comes like with gigabyte. So when you need to do compression, meaning that you need to throw away all history and just keep latest and greatest value in order to, um, you know, provide you very fast access to this data, uh, you need to only do compaction only on inactive segments. So this is why active segment size, the segment that will available right now, uh, should be relatively small. You need to configure this to figure out. Exactly. So yeah. Correct. And so I need not. Uh, I mean, I uh, I was naive enough to, to presume that I just you know I just run uh, Kafka streams and it works. Yeah. But in actuality, I have to go back and see the, to the topics it created and now configure it to, it, uh, to be op to be optimized. To, to yeah. The so the thing about uh, well, this this let me let me give you example. So th there is uh, there is a theory or theory slash practice about the optimization and the level of effort to perform certain optimization. Um, the Alexei Shipilov, he's uh, one of the. Uh, committers to OpenJDK and he does a lot of work about performance. He did like this like inspiration talk about performance. He was saying like there's three things like a green zone, yellow zone, and the red zone of optimization. So usually uh, when you do optimization in the green zone, you, it's like a very low, lev low effort, but it gives you good um, 
um, good uh, good results very quickly. For example, you're starting with your Kafka streams, but you start only with uh, one partition per topic. So that's why you see, okay, my performance is lagging. How you can fix this? This is actually green zone optimization. It's very easy. You just have a topic with larger number of partition. You scale your application by increasing number of partitions. So next thing is that, okay, so you're performing the stuff, you're doing like, okay, so application still performing not, not well enough. So because, because of the certain things that happen with application, you don't use um, the state stored more efficiently, maybe you're using different disks, it's more or less a yellow zone because you need to go through the more effort, but still getting a uh, little bit less of it. Uh, things that I'm talking here is more or less in the red zone of the optimization, something that you already go on really hardcore. You know framework very well, you know Kafka very well, and you know exactly where you're lagging behind. And am I doing it through Kafka streams, the configuration? Yeah, configuration side? available for... Do I, do, I, do I do it from outside, from Kafka itself, when after the, the Kafka stream application is well already running? I'm starting to play with my the streams it created. Yeah. So the, usually what I personally do and what I usually recommend people to do like a topic management themselves. So in my applications when I when I write I use admin API to create topics uh, whatever I want them to be configured. So replication uh, factor, exactly. number of partitions, all the things it's, it's not from within the framework but inside my application yeah. I write my uh, admin client that goes around creating topics yeah. or uh, adjusting them. As yeah. As when you when you in the yellow on the closer to the red line, you don't want to rely on some defaults. So this is why you're already proficient enough. You don't want to rely on what kind of defaults you have on topic creation on the Kafka side of things. You don't know, especially like if you're running like managing service, you don't know what kind of defaults the the operator uh, provides like this or like SRE provides or the, your, your managed provider gives you. So that's why you're always very like uh, vigilant about like what kind of configuration or topic you're putting. But that means that whenever, as I said before, whenever I add a store topic just as part of my, the evolution of my software, I have to go to the, to the other part of my application, which is the admin client and adjust and create the topic. I can't yeah. really rely now on Creating by default, yeah, uh, yeah. Defaults it's always for like default people. So once you're already expert of the things, you know exactly what you want to do, right? Okay. So you need to know, um, like when you when you like give you example with database, right? You, when you're creating your database, you know what kind of uh, the fields you will be querying. You don't want to d d just rely on only like a primary key. If you want to create indexes for certain fields because you will perform some other operations. So same thing is that, like you're starting very small. Kafka streams gives you like it can even like uh, forgive uh, some of the mistakes uh, with the initial implementation of this uh, streaming movie demo. Team has a certain logic that not entirely uh, accurate uh, but it, it did the thing you know it did the right result it's not very efficient uh, you know um, but but still but still it, it same same thing here we in the red zone of uh, Alexa Shapilov of optimization so we now we're trying to optim optimize the startup of application in case of failure so we, we have this uh, real-time application that performing the stream processing thing and now some of the failures happen you're running in the cloud you know machines goes up and down now you can cannot prevent that, but you can be resilient to, to perform that, right? So in this case, you need to be sure how you can optimize startup time. Why it is important? Because when you're starting, um, starting up application, you are uh, trying to reread this change log topic in order to recover your state. And uh, you want to have this change log topic really small that only have latest and greatest values. Latest and greatest values you only get if compaction happened. If compaction happened on the large topic you, or like segment size is bigger, maybe compaction is not kicked off yet. So that's why you need to reread all that on the on the startup on or or not only startup when they, we have a rebalance. Segments of, of data. No, you mean like you it, keep huge file, huge record of, of yeah. It also depends on the size of the window, for example, because window is it's another slice how you um, how you group your your um, um. But the point is that um, it is uh, the things that you need to configure. This uh, configuration of the topic, uh, this is uh, how you can define the size of segment. Um, really quick about um, application deployments in Kubernetes. Um, 
so Kubernetes provides different ways how you can uh, deploy stateful workloads there. Um, the Kafka stream uh, is the stateful application, but uh, because Kafka streams also rely on, on Kafka in this case, you might don't want to even bother and deploy your application into a stateful uh, fashion. So there's a, um, a stateful uh, set uh, in Kubernetes that allows you to have uh, this uh, persistent volume where you can store um, your uh, information from your the, the state store. Um, also, it's not necessarily to have it because you always have a Kafka here, right? So it, this is like a fantastic thing to, uh, to do. Um, it's a couple things to remember. If you not uh, like uh, don't like your stateful set, or you don't want to use, or never use this, or not 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 super happy about with a version of Kubernetes that you're running, and maybe stateful set is still in the better than the version that you're running, some people don't uh, uh, want to use them. So when you have a local state and you want to have this uh, recovery faster, uh, you need to rely on the local state. So this is why the stateful set that allows you to uh, like once you your pod will be restarted, you will attach correct uh, stateful set here, or oh, the correct the persistent volume. Um, if you're doing just a stateless stream processing, you don't really care, and you don't need to rely on this, like addition persistent volumes. If you do like a simple filtering application or simple transformation application, you don't really care. And, uh, and you do scale out and scale in, uh, scale out and um, scale down in uh, like a normal basis, you just do like uh, performing this uh, computation only peak times and after that you do scale out um, you don't really uh, need to care about this um, and sometimes you just simply don't trust your storage admin so that's why you don't want to mess around with this stateful set so um, let me quickly show you how these two configurations are different um, so the, with this simple deployment it is really 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 simple and looks like this uh, so Essentially, um, uh, we specify what kind of image uh, we need to we need to place. Uh, this is image that deploy and what kind of uh, parameters. That's it. So this is very simple way how we can deploy this. Um, let's see if I can uh, we can able to deploy uh, where I am right now. Uh, where is my thing? I'll do um, a movie uh, movie. Rating uh, deployment, and I will do where's my create. So I will create this deployment here. If you're gonna type, let me. Uh... Oh, thank you so much. Uh, let's see if we have uh, any pods here. So one application is up and running here. So what I can do uh, is to start uh, doing things with this application. I can do uh, rattle. So essentially, what it does. Essentially, what it does, okay, I will be like this. Right. Team, you, off you go. <laughs> so uh, the application is very simple. So we have a, um, I have some data that uh, has information about uh, movies, and I have some data that that uh, someone is submitting some some um, some ratings about this, and I want to perform this uh, real time. Um, uh, stream processing of uh, uh, average rating for a particular movie. So in order to do that, um, let me quickly load some data into uh, into my raw movies. I'm using Confluent and Cloud here because it's just simply it's very easy to me to do, uh, and I don't need to mess around with the running my own Kafka in Kubernetes. All right, so something is there. Um, and how I can see if it actually works, I can do consume. I uh, can consume from uh, from one of the topics in to here. Let's see if I will be able to see any results right now. So I will be consuming from the topic that will already have uh, all the stuff. Um, Hopefully, because it's going. Oh, yeah, something, something is happening here. Now, so if I want to have some action here, I can run this um, a stream. Where's my Gradle? Gradle a streamer, streamer. So I will be streaming some ratings here in the, my um, information about like the the rated movies, the rating of certain movies will be changing. 
um, right away because I'm running this in, in Kafka Streams application. And go into space and performing something in space, uh, some calculation happens, and after that it starts flushing down. So it is constantly updating this, uh, this uh, rated movie topics and stuff is going on there. So how I can scale this? Um, so in order to scale this, I can do edit deployment. Um, don't do this in production because you probably want to do like some of the like a change a change management change control but in this case you know YOLO it's the uh, demo what you want um, I will start with two replicas of my application and um, so what we will see here it's uh, it's uh, my constantly running this uh, the process that uh, prints out the containers or like the pods that will be created so now I have this uh, uh, um, in the mode of uh, parallel execution right so right now so everything looks good everything looks cool now because I started I created my topic with 16 uh, partitions so I can start up to 16 application but um, let me go a little bit not that crazy but at least let me do four uh, when I do four uh, it again go into space to download this file it's going to uh, replicas I'll start with four replicas now it will start um, individual pods with these applications in this in this Kubernetes. Now um, we will wait a certain time, but but regardless how long we're gonna wait, these two applications will still will be in pending state. Who can tell me what is going on here? Any uh, Kubernetes expert here? Well, it's rebalancing obviously. The state is rebalancing to other tasks, right? No. Okay, so let's let me give you um, uh, let me give you um, let me give you idea so I can print out some of the logs so you can uh, so you can you can get from one of the pods. Oops. Uh -huh. Correct. So it's the what's by quote anyway so we don't have a time to do guessing I'll, I'll tell you because this is a trick um, this is I'm trying to trick you here so if I'll do K um, K get nodes so this is the size of my cluster I have only three nodes in my cluster right and one of the things that I do here in my application I also using a affinity rules so I'm saying that please do not schedule same application on the same node so in this particular case uh, there's not enough physical resources to scale up my application right regardless it's it's an imbalanced state and everything is is frozen right now because it joins it, it waits for someone else to join but it cannot fulfill so one of the uh, reason uh, one of the uh, how we can change this uh, you can do things like this um, again, uh, the Kubernetes is the, it's, there's a legend how this project was called, uh, called after the name of the Greek god that forces you to spend money for your cloud providers because you can do things like this. All right, so in this case, I'm just uh, with the one, yes, of course, I want to spend more money on my uh, compute engine. So in this case, I'm extending my Kubernetes cluster in, uh, in a certain like a minutes in a few minutes uh, the Google Cloud Platform will execute this it's really usually very fast this is why I'm using this for for my demo Google yeah, you're running Google, right? yeah yeah of course of course yeah because <laughs> what else yeah there's no other way I test uh, the 14 million others <laughs> this is the only there's only way all right so um, a couple get takeaways here um, uh, um, Another uh, another option is to um, is to use uh, stateful set. So in this case, you specifying that um, this is your persistent volume claim, where you why well, it's not so big. Enter presentation mode. It's already in presentation mode. Well, font is too small. Um, it will be using this uh, storage to store this RocksDB data. So in this case, every time when you will be starting your application, um, you uh, will be attached to particular storage. It will have a 
state of uh, of your application and remember like regardless like what kind of uh, what kind of uh, instance you're running you still will have some of the state store from previous applications another way how you can optimize some of the things there's configuration that allows you during startup when you first time started define the number of um, uh, standby replicas so in this case uh, in future you kind of like are preparing yourself this is kind of like a yellow zone optimization right you already know this and you can kind of like a spend a little bit more 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 money on disk but you speed up application startup so yeah uh -huh. a disk disk yes uh, it will uh, use some time to do a replication and have some copies uh, copies to listen from the change log topic for these particular replicas. So it will be using uh, some of the um, uh, some of the things, but it will not do any compute here. So it's just uh, like a copy of the data. Yeah. Good question. It uh, it needs to. I, I need to check. I I, I cannot uh, tell you off off top of my head. So what 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 happens here? So I, I increased my my cluster size, and now all my applications are up and running here, and uh, all all good. Um, you can take the source code and play around uh, in your free time. But essentially, one last thing that uh, I want to talk about is. Uh, what about Kafka itself? Uh, what about Kafka itself? I talk about this in uh, Kafka Summit uh, New York. Uh, video is already available. Apart from my talks, there's uh, other like tons of different uh, cool talks about Kafka. If you are in this Kafka Jazz, you have to be there at least one of the events around the world. We have one in New York, one in London, and the next one we're doing in San Francisco. Next year we didn't plan yet, but something will happen. So I highly recommend to join because this is the place where you can uh, meet uh, like-minded people and talk about things that are relevant uh, to, uh, to you. Uh, and uh, last but not least, where you can get help, uh, questions and things like that, uh, we're running the community Slack. I'm, uh, I'm trying. <laughs> when I'm not uh, traveling and speaking on conference, I'm trying to look after this, uh, the chat where people work on some Kubernetes questions. Um, I um, recorded a few videos on uh, lightboarding videos about uh, Helm, about uh, Helm is another tool that you can use for deployment to basically have a um, glorified templating engine instead of just uh, like a typing thing into into console like I did, like just do edit my resources on Kubernetes and this is how I do release. No, this is not how we do releases. Um, and that's it. So there's some information about Kubernetes operator, but like I said, I will talk. I will send you two video uh, that will explain things more. Um, thank you so much uh, for your time, and uh, thank you, Internet, for being with us. Um, and uh, probably we still have some time for some advanced interrogation. And uh, yeah, uh, this is how you can find me. Uh, we always hiring, and uh, thank you for spending time with us today.